This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Now that's Bill Hargis, maker of IG88, and you are listening to Brews and Blasters. Here we go. for a good blaster at your side, kid. Let us go inside where we can discuss business over a drink. Did you join us for a little refreshment? Everyone's invited, of course. With Chris Salton and Joe Tavano, two guys from Boston, What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, yo, yo, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going. Oh, it's going. This train's, this train's rolling and it don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> what up, guys? Welcome back to Bruise and Blasters. This is the original Star Wars party. It's often imitated, never duplicated. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time partying with us. We hope you have a good time. And you know what? We say it every episode. We're sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that was sincere. Yeah. My name is Joe. Joining me here, Chris Salton. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, we're having fun. We're drinking some Kettle One. Yeah. We're having a good time. Not sponsored. Yeah. We have no, not sponsored at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Number of sponsors in this episode zero. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all right though. We have the we have a glowing Yoda statue here. It's pretty sweet. It's different good. colors. D- different. Uh, yeah. It's amazing how many colors it goes through. Yeah. This all... is a uh, production value. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good production value, <laughs> guys. If you could see the studio right now, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh, coming along. It's come. We're, we're doing things. Yeah, we haven't done anything in th- what three months. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we hung we we hung oh, the, that's the true. Lego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lego yep. Obi Wan. Yeah, we, we got have, that. That's new. That, that is new. And uh, oh, we get the sold sign for your house over there. <laughs> <laughs> we get some stuff on the way. Yeah, we got some things. Yeah, that are gonna happen. Yeah, stay tuned for some cool pictures. Yeah, we got some diecast uh, Willow figures here. Yep. We have a, we have a Rancor. We have a bunch of Boba Fett stuff. Uh, we have some stuff like in packages that like as as the theme song was rolling, I just I just realized I should open them. 
Yeah. I should just tear them apart. I just I just want to tear apart that like that muff tack right there. Oh, you know I just something? Wanna, I just want to eat that twenty roll package. Right it's uh, it's opened. Oh, it is. I cut the um the tape line. We should like, just tear. No, just just tear it apart. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like yeah. No. You know no. what's crazy? I don't even know why, but um, you can probably buy them for like ten dollars. Yeah, probably. Hey, Chris, this is if the Star Wars party is what our podcast is. We need to know when it begins. I would say right about um. Oh, hey, hey, <laughs> guess what? It's now. Yeah, it's now. I'm telling you that right now. What up? Uh, same old. <laughs> uh, all right, that's the show, then. I yeah, guess that's it, guys. Well, thank you so much yeah. for tuning in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just really into my new phone here. I got yeah, this, uh, yeah, you this got a real souped up phone, Pixel here. 3XL. Yeah, oh my gosh, I'm loving this thing. Yeah, this thing's insane. Get the IG88 background. Well, you got it. That's like your go-to. Uh, he's a badass. You know something? I noticed. Uh, that's your like, dude. I really like IG88. Yeah, his head is like a really fancy like mug. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I like to think of it more like a cheese grater. Oh yeah, cheese grater would be a good one. Or it's... like a food processor or something. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Like a I juicer, like we can make some like carrot like yeah. drink or something. I don't think IG88 would be like like a pretty scary dude to meet in a dark alley. You know? Yeah, I feel like he's the guy that's gonna like uh, hurt you in a really bad way. Yeah, for real, he doesn't care. Yeah, you know, because he's a robot. What does he want? Ex- exactly. That, he wants. That's m- the scary. Why does he want money? That's the scary feature to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know what's funny in the EU? Yeah, exactly. Why does a droid want one? Like, what are you going to do? Like, upgrades? In the EU, there were like eight IG-88s, and one of them became like part of the Death Star and became like sentient. Oh, so the Death Star was like sentient. I remember you telling me about that. So they're assassin droids. Yeah. So they're built yeah. to basically kill, right? They're built to kill. Yeah. They're essentially Terminator. Someone read Terminator and said, hey, that would work in Star Wars well. Yeah. Yeah. There Scary we go. Scary stuff. Yeah. I guess, yeah, if you want if you want to get scared by that, yeah. Yeah. And it is the holiday... Halloween season. The holiday season? Yeah. yeah. Holi- oh, uh, all the day. Uh, <laughs> Chris has gone bye-bye, Egon. <laughs> yeah. Go- Ghostbusters. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. How's Collector's Hut doing? Collector's Hut's doing okay. You yeah. know, we're hanging on by a thread. Uh, we go. You know, every- As always, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how are we how doing? We <laughs> that good, huh? That good. Yeah, that, same uh, as always. Same as always. That bad, huh? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I guess that's a good collector side update. We're doing all right then. Yeah, you know, I'm just staying up to date with um, the the newest and the uh, the coolest. The newest and the coolest of the figures. Yeah, them. you know, nice. You know, just do my thing. Do my thing, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Your right. your room tour is doing well. Yeah, it's it's doing good. Yeah, I'm I'm glad it's uh, circulating very well. Kind of blew up. Kind of went viral. It, it did. It's a YouTube um, sensation. Two hundred and seventy thousand views. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, guys, if Little you've seen Wilson. it. Wilson, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We should probably link up, link that up. We'll link that up in the show notes. Yeah. What? Check it out. Oh. Check out Check out the Salty Museum of Natural History. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were talking about Owen Wilson. Wow. We can do that, too. <laughs> wow. That, wow. That's a good one from, like, Wedding Crashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, I, I watched, uh, I watched, um, oh, what's the movie he's in? You know, with the guys and that thing. <laughs> You know, have you ever heard of it? He's I'll making probably the noises. Know. <laughs> I'll probably know what it is. It's um Hall Pass. Hall oh Pass. right, yeah, with yeah. uh uh Sudeikis and, there. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. You know, Wait a sec, is it is that the guy? Yeah, yeah yes, he's it is. The, yeah. Yeah. I you know, Comedy Central's been doing these Mamma Jammers over the weekend. You know, they just run like 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 50 million office episodes and then throw in a movie or two that you probably forgot about and didn't really care about watching. Right. And, uh, you know, that's that's been my weekend. That's not a bad weekend, actually. Not, not bad at all. You know, they threw in Hall Pass. They, I think I think throwing a little Happy Gilmore in there. Nice. You know? Yeah. Nice all, little Saturday, really. Yeah, always a classic. Always a classic. Really is. Yeah. This you know? is 30. Yeah. <laughs> 30? I'm pushing 40, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 40 young. Yeah, it's room th- 38. All right. So, I know the Halloween episode didn't go over very well. <laughs> but there's one spooky thing in Star Wars I did want to talk about. I need to stop you for a second. All right. Because the show art was excellent. You like that? Yeah, I really liked it a lot. Yeah. yeah did he did he catch where it was from? I, I, I did, yeah. It was E.T. 
It was E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Yeah, and um, I, I forget the other half of it because you like to like really mix things together. No, it and was that, just one picture. Uh, are you sure there was like someone on the bottom right? Wasn't it something different? No, no, nothing, nothing different. It was just a, it was just a screenshot from E.T. and it, you know it's when E.T. is looking through the ghost mask yeah. that he has on, looking at Yoda, and he sees Yoda, Yoda, and he fr- fleek like fleek, yeah. Fl- Flips. Yeah. <laughs> Law uh, forgot I talk there for a second, guys. Sorry. The Vok is doing its job. Yeah. Uh I'll all right, I've taken control back. <laughs> so E.T. is looking through the ghost mask, and all of a sudden the kid dressed up as Yoda walks by and he flip flip I can't say it. It flips out. And he freaks out. He's freaking out, man. He's freaking out. I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> Alright, so he sees him and he freaks out. And he looks at him, and he looks at uh, Yo, the the kid dressed up as Yoda, and he goes home, home, because mm. he he recognizes Yoda from his home planet or like his galactic like neighborhood or wherever wherever it is. The ET species is in the prequels, but it was from ET that we recognized mm. that ET and Star Wars were connected, right? And then it was pr- it was oh. it was confirmed in the Phantom Menace. Mm. So it was pretty cool. And it was just an um, homage to like Spielberg and Lucas being friends. Yeah, I feel like that scene when E.T. drinks a lot of beer. Yeah. I feel like that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I feel like that too. Yeah. He's Elliot, playing with Star Wars figures. I get it. I E.T. Know. is us. Elliot flipped out too. Yeah. Yeah, Elliot. <laughs> Elliot. Yeah. Home. <laughs> yeah, that movie was the best. I can't wait yeah. to show that to my daughter. Yeah, and you, also, you have to wait until she gets a little bit older because I remember seeing that movie when I was like five or six years old. It, it like scared certain scenes scared me. You know that movie didn't pull any punches. Some scenes are supposed to be good, and some scenes will terrify you. Yeah, you know, like when he turns white and he's dying. Yeah. Oh Yo, Jesus! Dude, learn about life, kid. That still like hits me hard now. Learn about life, kid. They threw him on the side of the road. He was dying. Yeah, he was in a river. Yeah, they was dead in a river. They found them. Yeah, with like one of those like uh, it was like a buzzsaw blade and like yeah. a like a I don't know some kind of like alphabet like yeah. press button thing. Figure I don't know. It, yeah, yeah. Fig, figure out your feelings, child children. <laughs> like that's literally what yeah. it was. Yeah, you know. And then then he then he came back to life because Elliot came. came yeah, back. they gave him a pacemaker and uh, everything's <laughs> the good. The hot stops know? going. Let's get in the let's get in the. Uh, the bikes and let's start flying. Yeah, and then they have a, a plant. It goes uh, yellow again, and the it, it plant good. is the plant is good. The bikes are flying. The moon is bigger than humanly possible. Yeah. All right, then they they put some cheese sticks over a radio, and all of a sudden the spaceship comes. Yeah, spoiler alert. That's how ET ends. Reesey pieces. That's how you catch uh, ET. Star Wars. Wait. So we're <laughs> hold talk- on. So I have this music on for a reason. It was from Castlevania. I oh, want to talk oh, about something. Dude, that was spooky. a good game. I want to talk about something. Yeah, spooky. well, this is what happened. You talked about, hey, the Halloween episode didn't do so well, it and then didn't. we spiraled. You, you so now spiraled. We're, now we're back. Now we're back. We're back. We we did the spiral, and I wanted to talk about something that is kind of creepy and Halloweeny, but it also is something that's coming up a lot in Star Wars, and that topic. You might have guessed it already. It's Vader's castle. Okay. All right. And if you've been paying attention, uh, as I've tried to in this in this uh, mixed up fandom that we have, uh, you've been noticing Vader's castle ever since it was introduced in Rogue One. It's been coming up a lot lately. I mean, a lot. Okay. Um, I mean, when we know Ralph McQuarrie has like had designs on it, it's always been kind of like. You know, kicking around, but as, as as soon as it became canon, a lot of things started go- getting in motion. Okay, so it's been featured in uh, recently in you know pretty much in twenty eighteen. It's been fe- re- featured in uh, the uh, Darth Vader arc in the comics. Okay, called Fortress Vader, where he builds his castle. Oh wow! Um, it was featured in Secrets of the Empire from from I think the year before. It's going to be featured in Vader Immortal, a VR series that's going to be coming out right yeah next year. Uh, there's a whole creepy Halloweeny comic from IDW, Tales from Vader's Castle. It was discussed in Star Wars Rebels. You know, ca- talked about it as where Jedi go to die. It was in Rogue One, obviously, um, and it was in Star Wars Fifty: Hope Dies Part One, mentioned. So 
it's been around and it's increasing. And you know, it's a cool place, a cool idea, right? It, it, it's thinking Vader has a castle. A lot of stuff goes on. He hangs out in a tank. He goes swimming. Yeah, it's in, pretty amazing. Into a pool. He has servants. Yes, that's true. Yeah. He has his own royal guards. I mean, that's pretty cool too. You gotta be honest. I only thought they were for the for the emperor. Yeah, it's he, his like sanctuary. Yeah, he got him. He got him there too. You know. So I, I kind of dig that. I dig the idea that you know he built this castle. He wanted to hang out on Mustafar. You know, kind of owning his uh, own his own defeat in some ways. But uh, you know, it's just coming up a lot lately. It's funny that you say that because. It's something that, like, I've been seeing, but I didn't say anything, and then you said something, and I was yeah. like, you're absolutely right. I went all Seinfeld, and went, what's the deal? Yeah. What's the deal with Vader's what's castle? <laughs> We're doing terrible, terrible impressions there, but, you know, <laughs> what is the deal with Vader's castle? You know what I mean? And I got, I got a question, okay? Riddle me this, Chris. Do you think it's going to be showing up in episode nine? Man, if it does, I mean, it's probably going to be like ruins, right? Is it? I mean, I mean, the why, thing looks pretty solid. Yeah, but why would it be like full throttle? Like, who's upkeeping that? Like, Vader's gone. I mean, if it's empty and it's just like it's just stone, just loud, it's just you know, volcanic stone. Who knows? Maybe the first order jumped right back in. You think though? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Who knows if Vader had like his own like disciples just hanging out there? Matter if they're worshiping like, him, it became like a temple or something. Matter if they're like, yeah, he's coming back. Maybe that's where the Knights of Ren are hanging out. Whoa. Okay. Well, Whoa. Let's 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 talk. Let's get real talk. Go go serious all of a sudden. Yeah. I just sobered up real quick. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Maybe. yes, yeah. you were saying. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I I heard you. That's the one. Now I'm now. listening. Yeah. Yes, we are listening. Yeah, Maybe the Knights of Ren are hanging out there. Maybe. Vader had like a whole worship thing going on, and, and like there were like disciples and acolytes keeping up with it, like that 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 weird dude in Rogue One. Oh, like that old crusty dude. Yeah, maybe he's not like part of the Empire. And he's like, you know, I will just make this like a temple to the dark side and to Vader. And like, you know, maybe like Kylo, like once Kylo Ren came back, he's like, oh, you're the grandson, we love you. <laughs> and like all of a sudden next thing you know like this is yeah, like it, it, yeah. it be exactly they just walk over <laughs> <laughs> sir what are you saying <laughs> I understand you completely and uh you know maybe like Kylo Ren comes back and like he's like all worshipped and praised there and you know sets up his own little clubby clubhouse you know clubhouse maybe lava planet let's why go why not why not the thing has air conditioning probably right Oh, you would think. And that back to tank would be boiling, if not. Or it could be like jacuzzi style. I mean, maybe, but I didn't see. Maybe. You know? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, overall, it's a guys, cool place. Guys, what do you think? Is the back to tank cold or is it jacuzzi style? Brews and blasts at retrozap.com. Let us know. Yeah, that's actually a, a great question that it we is. would love to hear from you guys back about. To, back to, is it cold or warm? I don't. I would like, the, like, room temperature? Like, like in... Is it comfortable? So in Empire, in Empire with all the bubbles and everything, I thought it was cool. I looked cool when Luke was in it, like like a cool fluid. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. It could, it could be. I, I think it would be cool on Mustafar. You know, cool him off a little bit. But maybe it's uh, maybe it's more jacuzzi style. Who knows? You would have to have some kind of AC because uh, lava's hot, obviously. Uh, Krennic wasn't breaking a sweat. You know, now I'm gonna go back and watch it and see if he was sweating. Yeah, he wasn't. Cho- he was choking on his aspirations. Yeah, he was. No, 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 that's true. <laughs> that's true. Worst dad joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful not to choke on your aspirations, Grenick. <laughs> like seriously. So I'm still in charge, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I think it's a setting that we're, you know, the creators in back of Star Wars right now really want to explore. It's. There's a lot going on there. I'm really looking forward to finding out more, but I, I kind of think we're going to see something in episode nine. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they're uh, giving it this much attention for a reason. Yeah. I mean, think about this too. In the aftermath novels, there were all these acolytes of beyond and like all these weird, like dark side cults 
that sprung up and they're collecting like Vader relics and really yup and they're they're like selling knockoffs and like there's all this Vader relic like black market stuff going on so I mean I think there will be like inhabitants of Vader's castle like kind of making it this sort of like like temple to like evil and dark side stuff so I, I really think there's something to be explored there I mean, where did Kylo Ren find the the mask in the first place? Where did it show him the power of the dark side as he proclaimed in TFA? It, it's so crazy to me that like the galaxy would accept it because when the dark side took over, it was peace to the yeah. galaxy, right? And we shall have peace. But think about it. The <laughs> dark side is going to bring peace to yeah. the galaxy. Yeah, sounds like the, a lot. Sounds a lot like the real world these days, my friend. Well, well, that that's why. Like, <laughs> wouldn't you be like, that doesn't sound right. I'm gonna lay low. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah, but uh, you know, people gotta get up, go to work every morning. Well, that uh, dark that's side, true. dark side, light side. Whoever in power still gotta get up. Yeah. You know, time to make the donuts. <laughs> Speaking of making the donuts, and I get Kane's donuts on my mind. Oh, dude, I almost got Kane's donuts today, but I haven't ate a donut in a very long time. So the wife is on the dairy-free diet right now with the baby, and uh, they get dairy-free donuts over there. So really? It's been, it's been it's been good. We I, I haven't had any since I went keto. Right, right. I'll tell you that much for sure. But before I did, I had a couple of good ones. What was your go-to's? Oh my gosh! I mean, I I go old school when I go to Kane's because I've been like they just do the best like. You know, the chocolate glazed, you know, the honey dipped apple fritter. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. They don't always advertise that one, man. It is it is good. My go to was a honey jelly. Okay. Yeah, I don't really do the stuffed. Oh they, dude. Do you ever have the creme brulee? I love creme brulee and I didn't know they I had know a you, donut. They they sell it in Boston, I'll tell you that much, because I got they got they got a place down the street from my office too. Really? Yeah. You know yeah. what I thought was gonna be disgusting and um I was so wrong. Was uh, the uh, maple bacon donut? Yeah, it's for real. And I was like, well, you know, it's a donut. I, I, I don't yeah. know if I'm gonna have bacon, <laughs> bacon Shut on it, up. dude. I took yeah. one bite and I was like, mad on me. Well, yeah, what oh. just happened? Yeah, what exactly. just happened? Like, did a couple days just pass by? I was sitting there, <laughs> like, what, <laughs> like what happened? Yeah, the world side spinning around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they're uh, they're bl- they're. Like their apple cider donut and their blue main bluebird donut are also good. I know you said you don't like stuffed donuts. I'm but not a big filling donuts. Yeah, yeah, I mean if lemon filling is okay, I can deal with that. Pretty amazing as well. Yeah, yeah, I can deal with that too. Yeah, yeah, but I mean if you stuff like a uh, a glazed donut inside a glazed donut, whoa! I mean I could I could I could mess with that. Guys, we're talking about Saugus Mass Canes Donuts Gourmet Donuts. You think you've had a good donut? You actually haven't because you haven't had a Canes. Yeah, we're so. not sponsored, but I mean. This is how strongly we feel. We're not sponsored, but we do eat them. I've been going there my entire life. My grandfather took me there. My father took me there. I've I've taken my, my children there. Yeah. You know? Life and so good. on and so on. And so on. So it goes. The circle goes round and round, turns around. That, stir- that circle is fried. It's called a donut. Yeah. And they will still be there. Yeah. And what does that have to do with Star Wars? Well, this all has to do with Bob Iger. <laughs> you know? Time he, time to make the donuts. Well, maybe not make the donuts so fast. When we're saying donuts, we're talking about Star Wars films. Yeah. Bob Iger doesn't, is not going to be making those donuts as, as fast as he used to be. You know, he was making one a year. Making one big old Star Wars donut once a year. And now he's uh, he's decided, no, uh, maybe not the best idea. But the thing is, when this, he does make that donut, it's going to be delicious. It's true. Let's stop this metaphor right now. We're talking about Bob <laughs> Iger, talking about Star Wars films and the schedule. And you know what? He took responsibility for saying, it was my idea, and I pushed to have each one out once a year, and I'm rethinking that. I was wrong. The buck stops here. Got to give him a lot of credit. Got to give him a lot of credit for owning up and saying, yep, the buck stops here. I made that call, and uh, I re- I'm, I'm, back, I'm walking it back. And we're slowing it down a little bit. Um, what do you think about that? Um, I know that they're, you know, closing out the saga with episode nine. 
Um, there is no announcement with a new standalone. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like they definitely will be, though. Um, yeah, there will be more movies. We're getting more TV. Yeah, that, that's for sure. That's for sure. They're gonna they're gonna be doubling down. I think into the TV realm. So let's put it this way: like, if we don't get a movie every year, okay, that's fine. If we get one every two to three years, that's great too. I so, think that's that's something to get excited about. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If I, we got a movie every other year. That would be pretty sweet. Well, I'll tell you, man. It was a weird feeling. Good feeling. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Great feeling to watch The Last Jedi and then a couple months later to watch Solo. That I felt like I was spoiled. It felt weird. It didn't feel like the universe was right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we watched Solo and we're like, really? Like, okay. It, yeah, oh, like, what's next? Like, is there something in, like, five months from now or what? Well, like, is... Well, we just started a Star Wars film, I guess. It, it didn't feel right. You know, like the hype was off, like everything was off. You know, it's like you got something good, but you probably shouldn't have got it this soon. Yeah, I mean, we we were spoiled. Uh, we got some really good, awesome goodies from AMC. Yeah, uh, for the solo movie. The dice. Um, we had primo seating. Uh, the the movie theater, as you guys know, if you watched our listened to our recap video, mm-hmm. uh, there wasn't many people in the the theater. Yeah, the movie was excellent. We watched it a couple of times. We Loved bought it, it uh, right when it came out on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, bring the next one on. So, I think I think the slowdown is going to be great for Star Wars and making great Star Wars content and making sure it's marketed correctly, marketed correctly, which is what Solo suffered from. However, the one thing that I'm not hearing from anybody, and I want people to consider, because this is a business when Bob Iger talks. He's looking at uh, nickels and dimes. He's looking at numbers on the spreadsheet. You know, um, story matters, but story only matters to Bob Iger in service of making sure that the Star Wars franchise is producing a profit. Therefore, if Star Wars made more and more money every year by doing one film a year or even two films a year, he would also be taking credit for its success and saying the buck stops here. So if Solo actually did unbelievable and it was a resounding, resounding financial success, he would also be like, yeah, that was my idea. I said, let's push that up. So let's not think this is too, uh, you know, egalitarian and too, uh, you know, selfless of him to be like, yeah, we should probably slow down. I made that mistake. If it had gone the other way, he'd be right there taking credit for that too. Right. So, I mean, I, it's a decision. It's a decision based on on what I think is a very rational decision. It probably makes the most sense to produce the best possible movies we can. But, I mean, take it with a grain of salt too because if this all had all gone another way, we'd be getting Sour's films twice a year too. Right. right you know, right. and that might well happen again. You know, but I mean, I think what what I'm most important, most interested in is the best Star Wars movie possible. Right. Right. So, I mean, I totally get it. You know, uh, yeah. they're working really hard on episode nine. They're, um, you know, the contracts is working really hard on uh, Galaxy's Edge. We have a, a Disney network in, in the works that we have as of right now, Resistance. Mm-hmm. We have the John Favreau. Um, Ryan you, Johnson supposedly, supposedly has a film trilogy. He has a film trilogy. The Game of Thrones guys have something yeah. going on. I'm sure there are other series in development, like Netflix right. has. Let, let's not forget uh, another season of The Clone Wars. There's a lot of Star Wars in the future. There is a ton going on. And I got to tell you something. I think we're at the point, but when Christmas rolls around and there's no Star Wars movie at the movie theaters, I think I'm gonna feel weird about that. I'm even, gonna, I'm definitely gonna feel weird. Even about that. though we got Solo a few months ago, I'm still gonna feel weird that there's no Star Wars at the end of the year. Well, we've been looking forward to that now. Yeah, and it's only been a few years. Yeah, but I still think that like that precedent was set. So when Episode Nine comes around, we're gonna be like ravenous dogs. And you know something? I think maybe a year and a half to two years is probably the right amount of time. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen on the big screen when it comes to Star Wars movies. And in the meantime, we got series, we have animated series, we got all this sort of stuff going on on the Disney streaming services coming out in 2019. So I'm pretty pumped. Um, I think it's a good decision. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, I mean, they're going to wait until the smoke clears and then pow right in the kisser. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, you know, Donuts. Hi. 
Hi, this is Mike Carter. I play Biff Fortuna in Return of the Jedi. Welcome to Bruise and Blaster. From a galaxy far away, it's Bruise and Blasters. Rebel scum and IPAs. It's Bruise and Blasters. Since the Jedi agree, it's the only podcast that you need. Tell your droid to dim the lights. It's Star Wars Resistance. Yes. Yeah. The Triple Dark. Oh, the Triple Dark. The Triple Dark. Yeah. It's a storm. Turns out. And in that storm, pirates like the strike. Yeah. That's it. This is true. Baller episode. It was good. I loved it. Yeah. Did you like it? I did like it. Yeah. All, so far, these episodes have been pretty enjoyable. Um... I think this one was better than the first one, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like this is what's going to happen, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 ramping up. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I just, I I liked how much more we got of the Colossus Space Station, how much more we learned about the characters. Um, It it was just a cool episode. And, you know, these these plots are kind of light in general, as far as lore is concerned. Uh, cool Phasma thing going on at the end, mm-hmm. but they're using the pirates as kind of a proxy inside the Colossus, so you you know it's harder to find out what the First Order is actually doing. Right? They're trying to control the Colossus, uh, make it a First Order kind of controlled thing. So we'll see where that ends up. But yeah, so I mean the Triple Dark, uh, twenty two minutes of pretty cool uh, Star Wars animation. Um, want to hear five things yeah. I liked about it? All right, first of all. What's the deal with Niku? Is he like a lobot? What with like his uh, like headpiece, the there? helmet, and yeah. the the way he kind of talks like a computer? What's the deal with him? He does kind of talk like a computer. Yeah, yeah, he's very very logical and analytical. Mm-hmm. Um, someone, Bill, Bill from Dorclair, Dorclair, great podcast. Um, said that he reminded him of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, okay, about yeah. how literal he is. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's a really good connection to make. He is very much like a Drax ca- mm-hmm. ca- a character, except without the muscles and the anger. Yeah, he's the opposite um, body type, obviously. Yeah, yeah but he's uh, like an innocent, though, you mm-hmm. know? Um, I, I So I'm, I'm curious to know more about Niku and where he, what's his deal. Yeah, what's his deal? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, what role is he playing? Cool. In this? He's a nice guy. I like him. I dig the character a lot. I want to know more, um, more about why he is the way he is. Um, and if not, if we don't learn his origin story, that's cool though. But I mean, I, I just think like it would be it would be cool to learn more about this character. And um, I don't know, he's just like unlike any other character that that there is. Yeah, I feel yeah. like he's just a guy that hangs out on the Colossus, and uh, I don't know, he just really super likes literal. Yeah, he like <laughs> just I don't know. He likes everyone, and well, exactly, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a likable character. Yeah, but he's uh, just very interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's caught Mike. Caught my uh, caught my eye, caught my imagination. I want to know more about him. Um, all right, number two. I love the interconnectedness of characters and the denizens of the Colossus. So you, you in the first episode, you know, uh, Kaz is playing darts with uh, that that pod racer dude. Yeah. Um, we because from episode one, he's the same species. Uh, and now you know, in the second episode, he's like you know dealing with uh. Blue and red snag- snaggletooth pirate guys, and, mm-hmm. and you know, he's kind of a scumbag, turns out. You know, I kind of dug that. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I just like that. I, I like how this show is going to keep on reusing these characters in different ways, and they're all going to kind of grow to be like community, kind of like Cheers. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So that's you, a good we'll, one, yeah. we'll know all of them. Number three, uh, I'm, I'm still still not loving the slaps of comedy. Right. That's why I don't, this isn't one I love, but it's number three. Uh, I think they need to tone it back. I think that the show is doing fine and catering to a young audience without all that. And uh, I think that it's it's just pretty cool and they don't need to go that far and try that hard with it. All right, number four. Back to uh, something I love. Um, the Pirates. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, they are cool. Um, yeah, I, I just thought they were pretty cool. I liked how... You know, they were like kind of cra- they were crazy. You hear them scream. Remember the screaming? Well, the Trandoshian. Yeah. Um, was that Bosk? I want to think that's Bosk. I, I would like to think that it is, but it's probably not. You know? Why not? I, I don't know. Will he be too old? I don't know. 
I don't know. How do they age? Let me tell. How does a snake age? I but, don't know. But yeah, that's, that's actually good too. Um, yeah. But you know that like you had like the Trandoshian, you had like the Tessic, uh, but not really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he was like kind of like a squid. Oh, head, but I get it. Really. I get a name for his face. Uh, Craig and Gore. He's kind of like the the bad guy from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, like Davy Jones. Um, and then there was another dude like in the background. He had like a like a trooper helmet, you know. Yeah, we don't actually know his species. Yeah, just male. It's almost like it's like a very aged, like cousin of a Tessic. Yeah, it kind of is, kind of like a Tessic, because you, isn't you, it? You have like the teeth with the tentacles, yeah. but not really. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh, that pod racer guy, Grevel. That's his name. Yeah, you know, in The Force Unleashed, um, you got to, f- like, face one of his species oh, that's as a right. Jedi. Oh, yeah, that's Kaz and Paratus, but he was in, like, the spider thing. Yeah, He was, was awesome. crazy yeah. looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. I forgot that. That, that uh, Duro, he was, like, a rat, right? Or something like that. The Duro? This guy? Yeah. No, he- that's a that's a Nemodian dude. Well, he was um he was like on the inside, kind of like playing him out, but he was a bad yeah. guy. That's a that's a Nemoidian. Yeah, yeah. Look at the eyes, the weird squiggly eyes. Ah, yeah. He's a he's oh like, he's like a, a trade federation guy. Yeah, he's a he's a fat trade federation guy. Yeah, but these uh these pirates. Well, it's kind of weird to see them pop back up. You know that's I know. Yeah, they're around. Yeah, you they're know? they're around. They're around. Um, you know, I I think they're pretty cool. Um. The, these pirates, they, they were just crazy looking. Well, that's a great shot of the Trend Ocean. Yeah, and all their um, all their ships are just like scrapped together. Yeah, and I just thought that was super. It was just a, like a, a bunch of mercenaries, basically. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I just loved how like their sh- their ships were like cobbled together. I saw like one from like an Imperial shuttle oh. with like X wing like, um, like there was like X wing stuff like uh, attached to it and like. You get to see like a bunch of different ships all put together, right? You well, know, our, uh, like there's like a Jedi starfighter with like tie wings and like all you know pod racer engines and all this different stuff. Well, our good buddies over at Hasbro, they um, you know, she had a ton of images of the new upcoming figures for Star Wars Resistance. Yeah, and one of the characters that they the figures that they uh, released was that uh, purple like chick girl. Oh, you know, yeah. The, the chick lady there with the helmet. And mm-hmm. apparently she is part of this, you know, pirate gang, you know? I thought she was like a bo- more like a bounty hunter. Tonight. She was part of that pirate gang, though. Oh, yeah, that's that, right. Yeah, that's why, like, at the very end, I was like, oh. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You get yeah, a, there she is. Yeah. yeah. You get a pirate lady there. Yeah. She goes down as super chick. She, she is. It's true. It's true. Yeah, these uh these these pirate ships are super super cool. Um so I, I really I really dig them quite a bit. Um the fifth thing that's that's pretty awesome about this episode um the ace pilots, the ace squadron. Yeah. Uh it reminds me so much of Voltron when they're all running down the hall, put on their their helmets. It, you know, just their jumpsuits and everything just remind me of Voltron so much. Yeah, they had I to really like save the day, but, you know, Kaz ended up doing, like, that scramble in there, like, transmissions, and uh, that made them bail out. I know, I know. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was smart thinking on Kaz. Um, was waiting for him to get in the in the, in the the ship and start fighting along with him. And you know that's coming, you know? Yeah, I was, yeah. you know, it's funny. That's what I thought was going to go down, but it didn't, yeah. you know? So it's know. not predictable. Yeah. Yeah, so overall, uh, great episode. I love how the, how the series is progressing. And, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that we have a lot to look forward to Yeah. Um, in future episodes. So keep on watching this show. We're going to keep on doing five things we love with each episode, and we're going to keep on moving this forward. On and on she goes, where it stops. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. <laughs> Email time. Email time. All right. Kicking things off with an email from Jeff. I thought it would pass along an experience you might appreciate. 
For dinner, we had pizza with pepperoni and banana peppers, Whoa. complemented with some buffalo-style chicken wings. I like that. For a drink, I had Caged Alpha Monkey IPA by CB Brewers. Whoa. Don't know much about that, but it sounds delicious to me. Yeah. I mean, I, banana peppers on the pizza, that's a clutch move. That is clutch, because yeah. uh, I'm a big fan of banana peppers. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I like them in my sub. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, you got the hots in there, too? Yeah. Yeah. After kids went to bed, I put on my Blu-ray copy of Solo. For the rest of the night, I watched that while sipping scotch. Man, dude, that's the solidest day and night ever. Jeff is living the life yeah, right there. Yeah. Uh, you know something? I'm going to retract some stuff. Uh, Jeff is going to go down as super, super dude. dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Uh, love the Kenner talk. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Sincerely, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff, you are the man. Yeah. That's true. Um, we look up to you and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're in awe of your life. So keep on sending the emails. Want to know more about those uh, those wild days and nights you have eating amazing pizzas than watching Solo and sipping scotch. So sounds good to me. Okay, here we go. Mandalore Mail from Johnny Grasso. Oh! What is up chris and joe this is your pal johnny grasso man welcome back thanks Glad buddy see bruise and blasters back keeping the star wars potty rolling 24 7 once again i gotta be honest with you the summer it was rough man it was rough i mean don't get me wrong i'm glad you guys went off and started these beautiful gorgeous families <laughs> you got kids now you're doing the whole like walking the dog and the, the strollers in the park picking pumpkins i love it i love it it's great it's americana it's americana <laughs> but uh, I had to start a support group for people who uh, missed bruising blasters over the summer, man. I mean, we drank, we played with guns. It was rough, but uh, <laughs> people were okay now. Okay. <laughs> so for the sake of time, I just wanted to get right to it. Obviously, everyone's talking about the Mandalorian. I'm sure you guys already weighed in on what you think of the armor. I wanted to get into a little bit of what you guys thought where the story might go. You know, what kind of storylines would they be producing and following with The Mandalorian? Uh, I'll go first, because if uh, you go first, this voicemail will be awkward. <laughs> so I was thinking something <laughs> along the lines of The Professional. Did you ever see The Professional? I know you guys saw The Professional. Yeah, great movie, with, yeah. Uh, Amidala, uh, Padme herself, and Jean Reno. Uh, it basically, I would like to see The Mandalorian kind of take on the role of a protector of a small child. Uh, kind of leaving his hunting bounties life behind him and doing some good in his elder years, if you will. Or maybe something like Clint Eastwood's The Unforgiven, the retired gunslinger, comes out to wrong one right before he fades off into the sunset. Something along those lines. Probably more so The Professional, because that was a darn good movie. Uh, and, you know, since I mentioned it, the armor, I got to be honest with you, uh, I think it's the helmet's my favorite of all the Mandalorian helmets. It's my favorite. Uh, I like the gun, how it's kind of like a callback to the holiday special cartoon where uh, Boba Fett was introduced. But it, I think it's missing something. It's missing a little color. Uh, every Mandalorian we've ever seen from Boba Fett to Jango Fett to all the Mandalorians, especially Sabine and Rebels and Clone Wars. They have their armor, and there's like a splash of color. Django had the blue, Boba had the green, and all the cr obviously Sabine was nothing but color. And even when you saw the Clone Wars Mandalorians, each armor had a splash of a color. Now, look, I'm not looking for like neon green here, but something. It's just a little, just feels like it was part of their culture, and they don't have it now. Um, love to hear you guys' thoughts. Again, may you drink many brews and keep blasters loaded. All right, guys. And as always, chicks dig me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is just like Johnny Grasso to... Classic. Yeah, exactly. From Rogue One Podcast right there. Now, that's a podcast for winners. It, that's, that's what they say. And that is the truth. Uh, love that man. Love that show. Pause. Yeah. The man. Yeah, Johnny and Haas, they're doing a great job over there. Make sure you check out Rogue One Podcast. Um, thank you so much, Johnny, for that voicemail. Um, yeah. We loved it. That was a really good one. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so lot to, lot to take in there. Um, 
Now let's talk the Mandalorian one more time. One more time. I think this is far from the last time. But what what do we want to see as far as like the uh, the plot be of the Mandalorian? Man, I haven't given this much thought. I'm just I'm just all concerned with the aesthetics, really. It was funny because that's what we were talking about, and then yeah. Johnny took it to a whole new level, talking about the pro- professional being like a protective or young child stuff like that. I didn't even put thought into that, um, and yeah. I'm not opposed to that idea. I would like to see him be some. I think the protector is a really interesting idea. Um, protector is definitely a role Mandalorians are definitely involved with. I think it would be interesting to see him protect force sensitive children in this time where there really isn't any protection. There's no Jedi. There's nothing to really. Uh, there's, there's nowhere for, for force sensitives to learn, there's nowhere for them to train this they're kind of hated or ostracized so i i think i think it would be cool to have him kind of protect them and lead them and try and get them maybe to a place where you know maybe there's like a, a far off place maybe it's like a like a travel show we have to get like maybe one or a group of of kids that could be kind of cool um there's also this idea that maybe he's like uh like kung fu you know remember that old show from the 70s like david carradine uh, um probably yeah, you know, he would like just you know be like this lone man who like roamed the land and then solved, you know, solved different people's problems for them by beating people up, kind of like the A Team did. You know, oh. the A Team. Yeah. No, well, I watched. I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, the Kung Fu thing. Um, not so yeah. familiar. That'd be cool. Um, I, I know, and then this idea, you know, going with the Cobb Van thing that he kind of protects the town and the shifting tides. You know, as the Empire falls and the New Republic. You know, really doesn't have any power out there. You know? Or maybe it's a guy with a vendetta. Maybe it's someone who's going to, like, take on the hot cartel. Oh, wow. You know? I think that could be cool, too. Like, revenge type thing. That could be super cool. Um, Or maybe it's, like, just him looking for a place in the universe. Just someone who, who wants to find... Purpose. Yeah, purpose. Or wants to find, you know, kind of unite the Mandalorians again. Um, maybe it's maybe you know the the first Mandalorian was called the Mandalorian, too. So I mean that I think that's something interesting. But to me, it kind of feels like you call it the Mandalorian. It's kind of like the Rifleman, that old Western TV show. And I, I don't know. I, I kind of get a get a sense of this old Western vibe to it. So think back to what the plots of the old Western shows were. But we'll see. Um, any and all things are on the table. Yeah, I mean, anything could happen. Um, yeah. I'm not opposed for any of the ideas of uh, what you just threw out, Johnny threw out. Um, I'm just pumped that John Favreau is the one uh, behind the camera. It's true. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh yeah, I need him, got, got him time. time. We're going Zakis. Zakis, are you familiar? Are you? Do you know Zakis <laughs> or do you know Forlorn? It's up to you, whatever you want to call him. This is another pristine, exclusive inbox that it's uh, true. Joe is. We're gonna tear this one apart. apart. Yep. Apparently, a Toys R Us exclusive. Did not know that, but I do now. Here in the U.S., that will be a Disney store exclusive. But it's really cool that your box has the sticker on it that you are ripping apart. Yeah, did you want it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> mine, oh, I, I got the, the sticker on mine as well. Oh, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's a Gan. We need more Gans in you. We're going to see a lot of Gans. Yeah. You know, we just have this one Zuckus. Yeah, bug face. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, bug face. Um, and this is a Black Series figure of extreme quality, I would say. Uh, the detail, the the soft goods, um, I, it's not even out of the package yet. But my don't me, this thing is off the charts. My uh, don't. Yeah, exactly. Off the charts. Like, detailed. I really like how they made the, the cloth fabric look like 
distressed it's, leather. It's patterned. It looks like distressed leather, even though it's actually not. It's a very thick fabric that is soft on the inside. Yeah. Um, you know what this feels like? This actually feels like an enlarged Kenner figure. Like, it looks like the, uh, the actual accessories are the ones from the, the Kenner figure. Mm. Um, and you get the, uh, the air tubes or the gas tubes. I mean, that looks great. The head looks perfect. Yeah. Um, you get the three, three fingers on the hands. Um, straight up, you know, kind of like your, your average black series kind of, kind of feet going on there. Um, this gun, you, you got it in the hand? Uh, he's a lefty. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. He is. Yeah. Um, daddy cake, daddy cake. Take his man. He's a lefty. You and Zuckus have something in common. That's true. We have a lot in common right there. You know? A lot of breathing tubes going on. But you're a killer, killer figure. I mean, there's look a ton, this ton of detail here. This one, this one is going to be very, very tough. We will... I'm I'm very confident to say that we will never see this one in store because no. the only Disney store that we have is about 40 minutes away from us and we ain't going. There's not that many bro. There's not that many Disney stores anymore. No, if there was one in uh, you know, the one that was in Saugus right down yeah. the street from us, yeah, I probably would have a better chance, but I'm not going uh, 40 minutes away. So no, not yeah, true. We uh, we bought it from Canada. That's it. We got it from Canada, eh? The Great uh, White North. That's it. And uh, this is it. Man, I, I like this figure. This, like, what what more? Like, should we just stop reviewing Black Series because they're just all phenomenal now? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't find one thing that I was like, well, no, this figure is awesome. Yeah, I kind of love it in every way. Yeah, we've come to the end of yet another show. But you know something? There'll be one next week, so don't worry about that. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much for listening to Brews and Blasters. Uh, you know where to find us. You can find us wherever podcasts are found. But you know something? Uh, you want to go to Jedi News or you want to go to Fanta Tracks? That's all good. We, lo- we love those guys, and uh, you can find us there too. You know? Uh if you can hear our voices right now, we want to hear from you. Email us, bruiseandblasted at retrosout.com. Voicemail, 978-219-6688, 978-219-6688. We are part of the Retrosap Podcast Network. Subscribe to get every Retrosap show all in one place with a network catch-all feed. It's available on all podcast apps. Our official website is bruiseandblasted.ninja. We put the dot .ninja in there, not the dot .com. You can put the dot .com if you want. We like the dot .ninja. Our mid-credits theme is by Luke Schreiber, and if you want to support the show... Just leave his iTunes review, and if you do, send us proof with your mail address, and you'll win an Oppo Award. <gasps> we forgot the Oppo Awards this week. Oh. And last week. Oh, no. We're going to have to do more. We have to do... It's going to be a Mamma Jamma of an Oppo Awards. Mamma Jamma. We're going to kick off the show with Oppo Awards We should week. kick it off and end it with Oppo Awards. And in the, it's going to be just an Oppo extravaganza next week. All right. While you're at it, Tell a friend of a Bruise and Blasters this week, Monday through Friday. Make sure they subscribe. Get them on there. Twist their hand. Get them to subscribe. You're having a good time. You want other people to, too. And uh, just make it happen. You know? That's our big marketing scheme. That's it. Tell a friend. Tell an acquaintance. Tell a stranger. Whatever you want to do, whoever you want to tell, make it happen. Smash the like button on Facebook. Smash Twitter. Smash Twitter. Instagram. Smash, smash, smash. smash uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and get your own Bruising Blasters t-shirt. Go to RetroZap.com, click on the t-shirts in the main menu. You'll be taken over to Tee Public, and uh, tons of styles available. Chris, CollectorsHut.com. Hello. Go over there, check out what he's doing on the video. And uh, that's it. You might want to buckle up, baby. That's a show. For Chris Salton, I'm Joe Tavano, and we say Godspeed Rebels, suck a la, and tell it to Kanji Club. We'll see you next week. And for then, may the force be with you.